Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about isosceles and equilateral triangles. Um, you should have that foldable that we handed out in class and something to write with and probably even a calculator. All right, for starters, let's revisit this vocab. Um, when we talk about isosceles and equilateral, isos, if we remember, when we see those two S's, we know that isosceles means that two sides are congruent. So in order to show that on my picture, I'm going to mark the two sides congruent. So if you, sh if you see this, um, we know that it's automatically an isosceles triangle. So on the other hand, when we hear the word equilateral, when you hear the word equal, we think equal. And lateral just means sides. So again, an equilateral is a triangle with three congruent sides. So when we see these, we want to make sure that we understand the vocab and understand what they're trying to say when they tell us it's an isosceles triangle versus an equilateral triangle. The other thing that's going to be a little bit new today is when we talk about the parts of an isosceles triangle. So here we have an isosceles triangle, not labeled, um, but we need to talk about what these sides, what these angles are referred to when we move forward. So the two congruent sides here, these two congruent sides, we refer to these as the legs of our isosceles triangle. We refer to these as the legs because then we talk about this bottom here where we see those two congruent angles which we'll talk about a little bit more but we call this bottom the base of our triangle so the only side that's not congruent would be the base of that isosceles triangle and we refer to that a lot when we talk about isosceles triangles so it's important to know because then when i move forward and i talk about these angles here that are emphasized these angles we refer to as the base angles so they're the angles that rely or that lie on the base. So if we think about that, then these two angles, since they're across from my congruent sides, these two base angles look like they're going to be congruent. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the next couple of slides. The last thing we need to talk about then is this top. This top is called my vertex angle. So it's the only one that stands apart from the rest. So kind of like the base when we're talking about the sides, this vertex angle is the top of our triangle. And, and again, this is when we're talking about isosceles, and we know it's isosceles because the two sides are shown congruent. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is this base angles theorem. This should be the first flip in your foldable, and we're also going to talk about its converse. So the base angles theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, and if the two sides are congruent, that would make it an isosceles triangle, then we know that the angles opposite of them are also congruent. So this first example here, it's showing you that it's an isosceles triangle because it's showing you that the two sides are congruent. So now this theorem tells us that the angles that are opposite of those congruent sides would also be congruent. So if I were to draw arrows to the opposite angles, you would notice that these would be my base angles. So my base angles are going to be congruent in an isosceles triangle. So how might I set up this equation to help me solve for x? Well, notice that since these are across from my congruent sides, that these angles are also congruent. And congruent is just a fancy math term for equals. So if I were to set up an equation here to solve for x, I would set both of my base angles equal to each other. So 7x plus 2 equals 8x minus 7. So when I do so, then I can just go about and solve. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So I get 7x plus 9 equals 8x. If I subtract 7x, then I get 9 equals x. So my x value here is 9. Well, now I also have to solve for y. So how is this x value going to maybe help me when I'm solving for y? If you notice, now that I have an x value, I could figure out what these bottom two angles are going to be. So I'm going to take that x value and I'm going to sub substitute it in for x. So 7 times 9 plus 2. So 7 times 9 would be 63 plus 2. One base angle is going to be 65. But remember, since this one angle is 65 and it's congruent to my other base angle, the other angle is also 65. So now I know that this angle over here is 65 this angle over here is 65, and I know that the inside angles of a triangle should add up to equal 180. So I'm going to take all three of those angles now, 2y 
plus 65, plus 65. And I'm going to set them equal to 180 because all three of those angles are on the inside. So when I do this, I get 2y, e or sorry, excuse me, plus 130 equals 180. So then I would just solve for y here. 2y equals 50. Y would equal 25. So x is 9 and y is 25. And if any of that is confusing, make sure you draw some question marks there. I also have a second example over here, kind of doing the same thing. Um, and I'm going to have you guys kind of set up that problem and see if we can solve that here by doing the same kind of process. Again, since we know it's an isosceles triangle, we know using the convert or using the theorem that the angles opposite are going to also be congruent. And if they're congruent, then I can set them equal to each other. So 2x plus 4 is going to equal 4x minus 22. If I go about and solve that, I get 26 equals 2x. x would equal 13. Okay, so in a similar fashion, like we did for the y on the other side, we got to plug x in. So if I plug x into one of my base angles, 2 times 13 plus 4, 2 times 13 is 26, plus 4 would be 30. So since one base angle is 30, that makes the other base angle 30 because they are congruent, because they're opposite of the congruent sides. So now I should do 4y plus 30 plus 30 equals 180. So if I have 4y plus 30 plus 30, we have 4y plus 60 equals 180. And then if I saw 4y equals 120, y is going to equal 30. So again, for the second example, x is 13 and y is 30. If you have any questions, make sure you jot those down. All right, so now we're going to talk about the converse of that theorem we just talked about and decide how this one works. So if two angles of a triangle are congruent, all I'm doing here is switching the words. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then we know the sides opposite of them are also congruent. So when you look at this first example here, notice it's giving us that these two base angles are congruent. So this theorem is telling us that if those two base angles are congruent, then the sides that are opposite, so let's draw on those opposite, sides opposite of those base angles are then congruent. And again, congruent is just a fancy math word for equals. So we know that these two sides, 5x plus 7 equals 42. So once I do this, I can just set up to solve here. 5x equals 35. x is going to equal 7. And when I look back to my directions, that's all I needed to find. So x equals 7. So let's try another example. Here, again, we're given that these two base angles are congruent. And if the two base angles are congruent, then we know that the sides opposite them are also congruent. So it looks like I'm going to get 8x plus 19 equal to 12x plus 3. So when I solve this, we take the 3 to the other side, I'd get 16 equaling 4x. x in this example should be 4. And again, we're only finding the value of x, so I can stop there. Again, this is just the converse of the theorem we just talked about, so all I did was switch that if-then statement. If you have any questions, make sure you draw some question marks so we know what to revisit in class. All right, so now we're going to talk about a corollary of the base angles theorem. And this corollary tells me that if a triangle is equilateral, and remember equilateral means equal sides, if it's equilateral, then I know it is equiangular. So if I look at this example here, first off, it's showing me that it's equilateral by using these hash marks. They all have the same number of hash marks. So when it's equilateral, then I know it's equiangular. And what does equiangular mean? Equiangular means that all angles are congruent. So I could set all of these angles congruent to each other, set them all equal to each other. But if you notice, they all have different variables. So that might not help me. But since it's equiangular and I know that a triangle adds up to 180 degrees, we've talked about the theorem that lets me know what each one of these congruent angles is. So we should know that each one of these angles should be 60 degrees. We've already talked about that theorem. So then I can do and set up three separate equations. If I'm first trying to find what x is, I can take 5x plus 25, equaling it to 60, again, because we know it's equiangular. So when I solve this, I get 5x equals 35. x would equal 
7. Okay, now when I want to solve for y, I take 4y and set it equal to 60. y is going to equal 15. And lastly, when I solve for z, I take 32z minus 4 equals 60. Add the 4 to the other side. 32z equals 64. Looks like z is going to equal 2. So again, the reason I knew to set it equal to 60 is because once we have all equal sides, then we know all the angles are equal, and we know the theorem that once we have all angles congruent, all angles must equal 60. All right, so the last thing we're going to do here is the corollary to the converse of the base angles theorem. And that tells us that if we have an equiangular triangle, equiangular meaning three equal angles, then we know it's equilateral. So this is just kind of the flip of our last corollary. So if the triangle is equiangular, then we know it's an equilateral. So an example six here, notice it's showing us that all three angles inside this triangle are congruent. So if all three angles are congruent, that's the definition of an equilateral or equiangular triangle. And if it's equiangular, then this corollary is telling us that it's equilateral. So let's show that all those sides are equal. So when you show that all those sides are equal, now we can see that these two sides that have side lengths in terms of x, we can set up an equation to help us solve that. But look at what I'm trying to find. We're trying to find the perimeter. And the perimeter means that we add up all the sides of the triangle. So I have to figure out what each side is. Well, since it's an equilateral, once I know what one side is, I should be able to figure out what all three sides are. So let's see if we can set up an equation. Since we know that the two sides are equal or congruent, then we can set them equal to each other. So I get 9x minus 11 equals 6x plus 16. So when I solve this, I'm going to get 3x equals 27. x is going to equal 9. So now I have my x value, but I know I'm not done because I needed to find the perimeter of the triangle. So in order to find the perimeter, I have to know what each side is. So how can I maybe use x to help me find the perimeter? I'm going to leave that up to you and we'll kind of revisit it when we get to class. But remember, if I have x already, how might I find the perimeter? So I want you to solve that. And I'll check your notes when we get to class. But if you have any other questions, make sure you jot them down because we will do a couple example problems when you get to class. So I want to thank you for taking good notes and I will see you when I see you.